How's it going y'all? My name is Zena and welcome back to the channel. So recently I've noticed a lot of lower level players in the game and I thought it would be a good time to talk about some useful tips in Battlefield 2042. I want to start off with getting comfortable with the game. So go over here to Breakthrough, uh, Solo Co-op, we're going to click Customize Settings, click Beginner, click whatever map you want, click Play. From here you can basically go into a bot mode and you can play against bots, you can unlock um, guns, attachments, vehicles, you can um, get more comfortable with all the maps. Yes, you can even use the vehicles in this mode so you can learn how to fly a helicopter or a jet. Um, if you're a new player, this is basically just a great mode to get comfortable with the gameplay, the game itself, and it's just overall a great place to start. All right, let's talk specialist selection. Now, obviously you can choose any specialist you want. I'm not going to try to persuade you one way or the other, but I'm going to talk you through the specialist that I personally enjoy using and, you know, kind of my thought process behind why I use them. So let's start off with engineer. Um, Boris, he is the only engineer that has a gadget that doesn't affect my gunplay. It doesn't take me out of the battle. Liz is very useful, I'm not going to lie, but you're exposed. You're standing there while you're locked in with your TV rocket. I just don't like that. Same thing with Crawford. Uh, it can be useful for flanks or maybe killing a little bird or something out of the sky, but you're just exposed. You're stuck in a position and you're also taken away from your gunplay. Just not a fan. Boris, I can slap down my turret. I can keep doing what I'm doing. I just use a turret as a spotting tool or if I shoot a tank uh, with a rocket launcher and while I'm reloading, I will put the turret down to keep the damage on the tank so it's not sitting there getting uh, repairs. So the turret can actually be really useful as a distraction. Therefore, Bor Boris is my engineer of choice. Over here for support, um, I recommend learning either Irish or Falk. Um, Falk is basically, if you run her with an ammo crate, she is unlimited sustain. Health, ammo, run her with smokes. Now you've got unlimited smokes as well. Uh, Falk really does it all, and she's a great, great medic to learn. Irish, huge, huge for team play because this game has more explosive spam than all the other battlefields combined. So basically, what, you, what you're going to want to do here is use your APS, okay? If you're playing Irish, put it down on an objective. Put it next to a vehicle. Put it down any time you have it available. Just put it somewhere. I promise you it will stop a projectile and help your team along the way. So um, Irish is really a, a great uh, specialist to learn. Of course, he's a medic as well, so you can help your team with explosives, keep them alive. Uh, I'd really recommend checking them out. Um, for recon, um, I would say Rao or Belasco are, are some of the better selections here. Um, Casper kind of going back to the engineer problem with if you're using the drone, you're just not really like in battle using your weapon and I don't like that. So, I mean, he has a couple, you know, uses here and there, but not for me personally. Uh, Rao with the hack, you can, um, you can stop vehicles dead in their tracks from shooting you. You can also uh, help teammates on uh, engineers on your team with javelins or recoilless. You can help them lock onto aircraft by hacking the aircraft. Now they can lock onto them. Um, so that's very helpful. Belasco, uh, just really good at, um, you know, moving around in the back lines. Uh, she can plop down her gadget. Now people don't know exactly what's going on with the mini map. So I, I found her to be very enjoyable to use. And I would recommend checking her out. Of course, Recon as well with the, the spawn beacon is so, so huge. Uh, especially for objectives that are maybe difficult to push because, you know, some you know the spawns in 2042 will have you walk in 200 meters from flag to flag. So spawn beacon can be really helpful for, you know, pushing to the next objective or holding down a specific location. So Recon's definitely a good class to go for. And uh, Bla Blasco and Rao is who I would recommend uh, focusing on. Now for Assault, which is what I play the most of, because it's just the best class in my opinion. You get extra ammo for ARs, you get uh, meds with med pen, and if you, I mean, essentially if you play around your team, you get a limited health, because ammo crates, med crates, angel loadouts give you med pen resupplies. Um, and then I just run smokes always for my grenade sl uh, slot, so, and, and plus I can, you know, utilize C5 in my gadget slots and I can take out vehicles. I can stay alive. Assault just, it fits my play style really well. And on top of that, uh, McKay. <laughs> uh, McKay is my number one choice for specialist selection. 
every time I play 2042. Uh, for one specific reason, the grappling hook. This game has a ton of verticality. Um, it has a lot of open areas. So the grapple hook to me is a gap closer. It's a way for me to move around the map quicker, to get out of uh, dangerous positions. And so I, I just really f find myself utilizing the grapple hook in almost every situation, every scenario. It is very, very useful. Um, yeah. And McKay is, he's just number one for me personally. Uh, but yeah. All right. I want to talk about the guns real quick as well. Um, so early level players can open this menu here and might be a little intimidated by all the weapons. I've used them all. Tier 1, basically all of them, minus a couple of pistols. So I have pretty good weapon knowledge here. Um, but let's start off with guns that you unlock early, right? Uh, the Glock. It's the best pistol in the game. Make sure you use it in the burst mode. You can change the fire mode of the weapon. Um, it's kind of annoying. You have to do it every single time you spawn in. But um, yeah, best, best secondary in the game right here. Uh, SMGs. The PBX is not bad, but the real fun starts at level 29 when you get the PP29. Uh, this weapon is just all, it, it does everything. Um, it's, it, it's just the best SMG. Uh, it's huge magazine size, quick reload. D definitely recommend this one. Uh, assault rifles. This is what I play with the most. I love all the assault rifles, but this is your, this is what you have at level one. Right out the box, it's, uh, just good at everything. It's versatile. It's got good fire rate, good hip fire, good reload, good ammo capacity. Um, so this is a good all around AR you can use. I still use this now. Um, and you unlock it at, at level one. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend this. AM40 is not bad as well. More of a close range kind of weapon. Uh, AK24 is my personal favorite. I've got my most kills on this. This is really good medium range. Scars, pretty good long range as well. Got the GL for vehicles or infantry. AC42, really good burst AR. Um, the vault weapons are fun to use, but unfortunately, they're just not as good. So if you want to mix up your gameplay, go for it. M16, M416 are really fun. Uh, AEK, of course, is delicious. Uh, but they're just worse than the 2042 guns. Just know that going into it. LCMG. I don't need to say anything else. It's delicious. Close combat ammo. Uh, short barrel. It shreds any person in your path. This is really all you need right here. Marksman rifles. DM7 is what you're going to get first. I'm not really a fan of it. SVK is more my style. It's a two-tap up to, I don't know, 100 meters or something. Uh, but yeah, SVK is, is really fun. Uh, I enjoy the V-Car as well, but not many people enjoy the V-Car. I use it kind of like an SMG, but it's a marksman rifle. Uh, BSV, insanely strong. Does like 70-something damage as a headshot, and it's a fully automatic weapon. You can even sub out a submachine gun magazine for full automatic fire. It's just ridiculous. Highly recommend the BSV as well. Snipers, SWS is good all the way around. Um, if you're not sure what sniper to use, just use the SWS. It's, it's solid 10 round magazine as well. DXR, if you're looking for long range sniping, long range sniping, this is your friend right here. Uh, my personal favorite GOL is just satisfying to use. No other reason. It's just so satisfying. Uh, I don't really use shotguns that much, to be honest. I hate the GBT. The 12M is disgusting. The crossbow is actually kind of fun to use. Uh, I use it like close range combat, you get one shots with the standard ammo. I think like 20 meters, 29 meters, something like that. Uh, but yeah, just close range, almost using it like, using it like a shotgun. Uh, I don't like the railgun at all, to be honest. And the NVK is actually kind of fun, but you get punished with the reload. But yeah, that's a quick overview of weapons. Okay, so now that we've got our weapons set up done, let's go over here to mouse and key, foot, edit keybinds, weapons and equipment. Scroll down here to modify, change that to whatever you want, mine's on T. But here's, here's where it gets really, really good. Um, you The the sight, the barrel, underbarrel ammo, you can set a custom keybind to swap it. Um, so I have my, I'll only do it for the underbarrel and the ammo because these are the two most important things I need to swap in a split second because I'm out of ammo, I've got a guy pushing me or there's a vehicle in front of me and I need my underbarrel grenade launcher. So these are the two that I focus on. Uh, with sights and barrels, I, I can, you know, swap my suppressor in a, you know, I don't need a quick keybind swap for this. Same thing with the site. I can just swap the site. I can take my time with it. It's not like a rushed scenario. These two are more important in my opinion. Um, so basically I have them on mouse buttons. So I hit the T on my keyboard, hit the mouse button, boom, split second. I'm ready to go locked in with my new ammo, locked in with my new underbarrel. If you're on controller, 
Um, I, I did pick up my controller here just to play around because I'm curious. Uh, I don't play on controller, but the standard keybinds will put you at um, holding Y for uh, pulling up your plus menu. So if I'm holding my controller and I'm holding Y, I want to still be able to move around. So I've got my I've got my thumbsticks. I've got my my thumbs on my thumbsticks. I'm hold or uh, on my left thumbstick. I'm holding Y with my right hand. Basically, I'm looking at my left my left and right bumpers are. For, to me, what seem to be the best options for those two keybind options. Uh, again, I don't play a controller, so this may not be the, the correct answer, but I would try maybe even like a left analog click um, or the bumpers. So again, just to summarize, we're going to hold Y on the controller or triangle on PlayStation, and then we're going to rotate, you know, we're going to move, we're, we don't want to stand still because we're going to get sniped. So we're, we're moving around our player model with the left analog stick, and then we're using either left or right bumper or maybe even a left analog click uh, to, to swap our attachments. So that, that's my suggestion for controller players out there. So I wanted to show an in-game example of the keybinds. So boom, we're shooting. Oh no, we need ammo. Pull up the plus menu. Boom, swapping ammo just like that. Boom, swapping ammo. I can literally swap my ammo so quickly with, the, with this keybind set up. Uh, same thing with the underbarrel slot. Um, oh no, there's a vehicle. Boom. Quickly grenade launcher swap. Boom. There we go. I can swap uh, I can swap my underbarrels very quickly. So yeah, there's an example of that in-game. Also, just another quick thing. If you're unhappy with your squad, just go here, squad and players, hover over your name, click more, and then it'll be an option to swap squad. If you spawn on a tank or a vehicle with turrets, maybe assist the vehicle with taking a flag or getting some free kills. I think people overlook the turret seat on many vehicles, but this can be an easy way to help keep your team's vehicles alive and get you more kills slash assists. Controlling vehicles on the map oftentimes will win you the game. So don't be afraid to spawn into that tank gunner seat, wipe out a few kills, push an objective, and help your team out. Let's not forget Battlefield is a first person shooter, so don't forget to shoot your weapon. If you need extra aim practice, check out Portal, host a server, experience code, then type in AANJ7Z. This will take you to a good firing range where you can warm up with all guns and no reload penalty. Plus the bots don't shoot back, so you can just farm for free. I would like to add here that even if you don't have the best aim, you can still perform well in, in Battlefield 2042 and get kills. The best way to get kills is with game knowledge and positioning. Learn the flanks. Understand good angles to take gunfights. Learn how the enemy rotates from objectives. Which hills do they sit on? Where do they bunch up? Overall positioning is very important and it's something I would recommend you all focus on in your gameplay. Now this next tip is something y'all might laugh over, but coming from an Apex player, door control is important. Make sure your team has ownership over the control panels scattered across the maps. The main ones to focus on are the door panels and the metal detectors. Controlling the doors will make moving in and out of the building much easier along with helping keep the enemy out. Now if you come across an enemy door, you'd have a couple of options. You can force it open, but this will leave you exposed unless you smoke yourself. You can also EMP the door to disable the control panel, or you can simply blow a hole in the wall with C5 or a tank. If your team has control over the metal detectors, an enemy who walks through will trigger the alarm and their entire body will be highlighted in red. Use this to your advantage since you can see the enemies literally through walls or smoke. This is a big tip that many players simply miss. Now this is probably my number one tip in all of 2042. Run smoke grenades. Or at the very least, a smoke launcher. Hell, you can put an underbarrel grenade launcher that shoots smokes. Anything you can do for smokes. Um, I think you will find it's very challenging to play this game without them. The main issue is map design. I didn't have this issue with previous games. You have to use any map assets to your advantage, whether it be a rock or a blown up tank. Smoke the open area and run alongside any cover you can find to, to push. My main use for smokes is to rotate between objectives or maybe revive my squad mate who's down in an exposed position. If you're a medic, I think you will find smokes to be very useful in your loadout. Be efficient in your gameplay. Use the call-in tablet for transportation. Don't walk everywhere. 
use a quad bike, use the condor, literally anything you can do to move around the, the map more efficiently. All this time I see players just walking from point to point. It's just a complete waste of time, okay? Simply use a vehicle or redeploy. Walking 300 meters to an objective and by the time you get there, there's no enemies left, just stop. Just stop. It's time to evolve. It's time to use the call-in tablet. Last thing I want to touch on is playing the objective. Now, Battlefield is a team game, but most players just do their own thing, which is fine. But here's a couple of small tips to help you and your team. If you're playing support, you need to constantly be throwing down ammo or heals. There is no reason not to. If your ammo box is on the ground, you're getting free XP along with keeping your team resupplied. Same goes with Medcrate, except you're just keeping the team alive with more HP. Any Irish players out there, APS is your best friend. Please use it as much as possible. The game has more explosive spam than I know what to do with. Please use APS when holding a point or even supporting a tank. Have a sense of awareness. Pay attention to your minimap. You can find a lot of useful information on there. If your teammates are down, maybe throw some smoke grenades uh, for the medics to help get them back up. Pick up teammates in a transport to move them quickly to the flag. You've got four seats in a lat V, use them. If you see a chopper that is destroying your team, switch to the Soflam or a launcher to help deal with the problem. Waiting on the blueberries isn't always going to cut it. Most of the time, you have to be the one to make the play. My point here is that small acts of team play can add up to increase the overall experience for everyone. That's all I have for y'all today. If you made it this far, you're a legend and I appreciate you watching. If you're looking for live gameplay, check out my Twitch. I stream every single week. I'll put links in the description. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Around the tower. Nah, the tower. Terminal.